I'm being joined now by Salome Danjuma, Business Development Manager with Baker. Thank you, Salome, for joining us on News on the Hour. Thank you for having me. From a personal and professional capacity, did you see the disruption of COVID-19 coming before it hit? Um, no, I don't think anyone saw this disruption happening. Um, but we did foresee some type of disruption happening in the industry, but we didn't see it coming from a pandemic. Now, what are the likely anticipatory events that might disrupt your services that you, you normally would anticipate for, aside this pandemic? Um, there's so many things. Um, okay. There's terrorism. There's been a lot of attacks. When there are terrorist attacks, they usually attack hotels. Um, so you see bomb threats happening at hotels. Um, but we did, in Lagos, I can say we had experienced Ebola prior. So... It, it does feel like um, history is repeating itself, even though Ebola wasn't um, as devastating because the impact of COVID-19 is the entire world, why Ebola was mostly in Africa. So we did have that experience of the disruption of Ebola. So this feels like um, practice again, unfortunately. All right. Now, look, with hindsight, you did make mention to Ebola. Would you say you were afforded enough time to put your house in order, so to speak? Um, I, think, I think we really have visionary leadership at our hotel. So from the moment we saw COVID-19 in China, we started making preparations. So from December, as soon as we heard, we started preparing. So we started by stocking up on gloves, masks, um, sanitary equipment, and we did try to anticipate what would happen. So even before the lockdown was said, we decided as a hotel to shut down to enable the safety of our guests and our staff. And so currently, as we speak, there, there are no operations going on at Whit Baker, no, get, no, no. in-house guests. All right. Now, what, what other measures have you adopted since the news of the first confirmed case? We, we had to up our um, cleanliness. Um, so we had to inc um, increase the number of, which we had done, but I think in habits, we always tend to forget after a while. But we've always had the um, hand sanitizer stationed all over the hotel. Even after Ebola, we still kept those stations. It's just that people tend not to use things after um, history has gone by. But we try to up the sense of cleanliness. So we're cleaning more often than we would, especially wiping down the counters. Uh, we tried sending a lot of emails to assure our guests, but there's really nothing much you can do. A public space is a public space. And when there's an epidemic like this, people would tend to avoid public spaces. Now, the, the pandemic COVID-19 was an uninvited guest. It, um, it took the whole world by storm. How significantly <laughs> would you say this has altered the way you people run your business? And what level of risks have you had to take on to stay in business? Um, we chose not to take any risk. Um, so that's why we shut down. Because uh, we are 200 people um, staff strength. So imagine having 200 people sick or having their families, because it, it does it extends outside of the work environment. It's the work environment, it's their families, then it's the guest as well in whom they interact with. And because we have quite a young demographic also working in the hotel for our waiters and our, um, in the general areas, there's likelihood that they might be asymptomatic. So that risk of the asymptomatic um, um, pool made it not a worthwhile endeavor because health at the end of the day is wealth so if people are sick it's it's there's nothing that can be done for business right interesting you didn't make mention of your staff while you were um addressing the earlier question and we'll bring me to ask you now some of your staff definitely are not coming to work and they have families to cater to now, I'm concerned about what, what is in place for them as, as an organization. I mean, are they still being paid? I mean, are, they, are their welfare still being catered to in this season of disruption? Yes. So our, our staff, we've always said they are our most important asset. So in order to keep them safe, we have paid their salaries and we still intend to keep paying their salaries for some time, hopefully waiting for this to die out. But we have 
been paying even as we've been closed because we want to make sure that they feel safe and they are secure because at the end of the day our staff we have like i said 200 people we have a 90 over 90 percent retention ship so the original staff that started with the hotel are still the staff most of them are still the staff we have today we don't want to lose their expertise their their service their trainings that have gone in so it also helps us that when we open that consistency and the service that we're known for would kick right back in as if nothing happened if we choose if we don't lose our staff so for us as our brand we decided to make sure that our staff are secure so our hr still is in communication with everyone if they need it our gm is still um available for everyone who needs to speak to him um we still have meetings um via whatsapp so um we have tried in the best of our capacity to make sure everyone is retained. Yes, That's we're still paying know. our salaries yes. and we'll continue to pay salaries. All right, Salome, for, for Danjima, thank you for joining us and for your time with us on News on the Hour. Thank you very much for having me.